I don't know if I could live up to that. <laughs> Especially because um, what am I about to say is in such opposition to that, you know? Hmm. Because I am a product of failure. As an artist, I never seem to color within the lines. And as a teacher, I could never quite seem to follow the prescribed traditional methods of classroom teaching. But I tried, I really tried. But you know something? Sometimes you just have to let nature take its course. When I lived in Philadelphia, I was hired by the Philadelphia Mural Arts Program to develop this workshop for delinquent high school students. And I was so excited about this project. I was like, yeah, I'm going to make something that the students could really connect with and that they could be inspired by. And I was like, yep, yep, I'm going to do this. I'm, I worked hard at this. And when I presented it, the total opposite happened. Like, they hated it. <laughs> they were totally disconnected. Like, like they were like, listen, anyway, we're going to play cards or something. I was like, wow. So I was defeated, though. Like, it defeated me as a teacher. Like, I was like, I'm over it. I'm done. I'm not teaching anymore. And fortunately, the next day, I had the opportunity to um, paint a mural for a Fortune 500 company, right? And I was excited about that because I needed a little break from what just happened. And while I was out there painting, the local television station was there and they were interviewing me, right? So I'm painting this mural and ironically, all the questions that they were asking me were about teaching. And I'm like, are you freaking kidding me? I'm like, you want to ask me about teaching now? Like, right now, you want to ask me about teaching? But I was live on air, and I had to go with the flow. So it got to the final question, and they were like, well, can you tell us how our viewers can contact you? And live on air, I gave out my telephone number. <laughs> right? I was like, I, I, I even caught myself. I was like, dude, you just gave out your number on television. <laughs> I got back to my studio, and there was like messages all on the phone, and I listened to a couple of them, and I was like, wow, yeah, really? Like, people like, hey, we want to take classes, and I'm like, hey. So the phone rings, and here they are, like, hey, we seen you on television thinking about taking a class. And out of pure frustration, right? Out of pure frustration, I answered the phone, I'm like, yeah, I'm teaching class, I'm teaching graffiti. And every time someone called, I answered with that same attitude. I, I think I just wanted to push them away, to scare them away. Yeah, I'm teaching class and teaching graffiti. <laughs> and that's when the shift happened. Because every person that called was like, well, where do I sign up? <laughs> it's, it was crazy. It was crazy. You know, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Pose 2, a.k.a. Mr. Max Moses. I come from a generation of graffiti artists who challenged the idea of self-expression. <laughs> and you know, we did this simply by writing our names. I come from New York, and this is where my mother planted the seed that every human is an artist. In New York, amongst all the noise and the chaos that makes New York this great city, to me, there was nothing more magical than riding the subways. Back in the 70s, the subways were filled with all these colorful names, inside and out, crash, Heart, Booze, T-Kid, Mac, Raz, Scheme, Scene, PJ, Slave. Amongst the citizens of New York, in the world at large, this art form was a crime. 
but I had a totally different outlook. To me, these names were like the titles for an adventure story. And the more I seen the names, the more I wanted to know about the individuals behind them. You know, at home, I have a six-year-old boy, right? And whenever he enters the room, he enters the room with the sound of a trumpet. Dun, da, da, da. <laughs> Courtney is here. His name is important to him. Our names are important to us. They identify who we are. And once we begin to write our names, the game changes. Like we develop a signature, and that signature is like the introduction to the story of our lives. For example, there's Courtney right there, developing his signature. Let's take a look at Beyonce's signature. The letters are bouncy and they almost appear to be dancing. The B is bold, it's like a logo or a brand. It says a lot about her personality. Oprah Winfrey, her signature is elegant, orderly, refined. And that big O is symbolic of this large capacity for giving and receiving. Lastly, let's take a look at our president, Donald Trump. His signature is very pronounced. It almost appears that it is engraved into the paper. It symbolizes sheer determination. Our names are important to us, but what's even more empowering is how we use our names. How we use our names helps us identify who we are. I remember the first time I seen this whole car painted by the legendary graffiti artist Lee Quinones. The title of it is The Energy From My Soul. Hmm. I was so moved by the first time that I seen this, the fact that it was done illegally yet carry such a potent message that I was blown away. And from that moment on, I committed myself to this art form and to this journey. Okay, you got to understand something here, right? You had to be cunning, witty, and have a keen sense of awareness to sneak into the subway yards where the trains were parked. I remember the first time my crew and I snuck into the train yard. We were armed with spray paint, markers, and Flowmaster ink. It was dangerous, but it was exhilarating. I must have wrote my name over a hundred times that day. My clothes were filthy, but we got away clean. But the subway ride home? <laughs> That was a whole nother experience, okay? Like, I was so afraid of being arrested that my body was physically shaking, right? And I couldn't let my friends see me like that. So I sat down trying to be cool. But then I started thinking of the fact that I had to go home and face my parents. And that thought caused a train reaction. My teeth started chattering uncontrollably. Suddenly the train came to a halt. And I heard the conductor say, last stop, 242nd Street, Van Cortlandt Park. I got up slowly, started making my way off the train, but something said stop. And I looked up and I seen this tag and it read, it's a challenge to be free. I couldn't quite grasp what it meant, but suddenly, my body just quieted, and I was no longer afraid of the unknown. You see, as a teenager, I was utterly lost and confused, desperately trying to find my way in this world. Hmm. And I decided the best way for me to do that was to write my name as big and as powerful as I possibly could. And I had a plan. And my plan was my middle school. I was going to go to my middle school right in the courtyard. 
where everybody goes for lunch and make my name there. And I did. At night, I went. I got two cans of silver and two cans of red. And I went and I painted my name. It was sloppy, but I pulled it off. And the next day, I arrived at school right at lunchtime. And all my friends were like, secretly congratulating me, like, yo, that piece is hot, that piece is hot. Like, yo, right? I was like, yeah, yeah, right? But out of the corner of my eye was this six foot five luminous being, our principal, <laughs> Dr. Steinberg. And he was slowly approaching me. And slowly he got right up in front of me. And he had a real cool demeanor. He was like, how you doing today, Mr. Hopkins? I was like, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. How you doing, Dr. Steinberg? I'm good. He was like, good. Today, after school, I'd like for you to come to my office so we can have a conversation about your artistic endeavors. <laughs> I was like, damn, <laughs> I'm busted. That day after school, I went to Dr. Steinberg's office, and I had agreed to pay a hefty fine to have my masterpiece removed. But I left that day with something even more valuable than that. I left with a sense of who I am and who I wanted to be. You see, Dr. Steinberg seen my art, my masterpiece, as an artistic endeavor. So the journey continued, and I traveled from Rochester, New York, to back to the Bronx, from the Bronx to Philadelphia, and from Philadelphia to the West Coast, and from the West Coast to the rest of the world. And the more that I wrote my name, the vision expanded, and so did the message. And as I was telling this story to a good buddy of mine, he said to me, man, listen, I witnessed your life, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And throughout it all, you've always had your art. He said, your art has always kept you connected to your humanity. And he was right. There is a connection there. Every human is an artist. Every human wants to make their mark on the world. I was here. <laughs> you know, I've had the opportunity to work with corporations, nonprofit organizations, private commissions worldwide. And I've taught from kindergarten to college. And when I'm interacting with my elementary students, I always ask this question, like, yo, what is art? And they're like, yo, art is coloring, art is painting, art is making stuff. I'm like, making stuff like what? And I'll point. I'm like, OK, is the Sean sneakers, are those art? And I, could, I look in their eyes, and I can see their minds pondering, right? And they're like, hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's art. That's art. I'm like, okay, cool. What about Denisha's hair? Is that art? And I look at their faces. You can see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's art. And I start pointing to every object in the room, asking them, is that art? Is that art? Is that art? And suddenly somebody just blurts out, Mr. Max Moses, everything is art. And I smile. You know, recently, I had the opportunity to work with some fellow artists, Will Caso, Isaiah Crow, uh, Martha Alicia, M2, and Eske Scotty in Vermont at Middlebury College. And we did a series of workshops and a mural collaboration as well as a panel discussion. And during the panel discussion, one of the students asked, what is a day of creativity like for you? And it brought me back to that infamous train ride. And I said to them, you know, a day of creativity for me is like, it's an opportunity. 
It's an opportunity to walk into the unknown. That's what happens when I paint and I don't have a sketch. When I teach and I don't have a plan, I'm trusting the unknown. And you know, that's exactly where I fail. That is exactly where I fail to conform. Hmm. But ultimately, where I have grown into the most honest version of who I am. Hmm. You know, every human is an artist. But like that tag I read on the train that day, it's a challenge to be free. Thank you.